Welcome back everybody, it's great to have you here. I'm excited to have a new Argosy video up and the shower is installed. I don't wanna show you guys too much. I do wanna say real quick a big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. We're gonna be visiting my dad's house to talk more about that in a little bit. Unfortunately, I lost a bunch of footage on this build. The first time this has ever happened to me, I broke a hard drive and lost a lot of the shower wall footage. Let me explain that to you real quick. This is the wall here. This is half inch Baltic birch with an eighth inch thick acrylic veneer basically about four sheets or three sheets of four by eight acrylic and glued them using total boats epoxy onto all this baltic birch ply and that's how i made the walls and you can see these cutouts in here i was trying to take weight out um i don't think that was super effective but i made the effort i did this on my cnc so let's jump into the video we're going to dry fit this enclosure now and then bring it in and install it Okay, so I wanted to show you real quick what we kind of got, where we're at with this. Now, one thing we did have to do is I came in, this panel got a little bit small and it shrunk in a little bit. So what I ended up having to do was cut about a quarter of an inch off of the back of the shower pan, um, which, you know, this thing is all fiberglass and epoxy. It's pretty stout, so I think it'll be okay. Plus, this is the very back edge. You're never going to be near it. You're not going to stand here. You're not going to touch that. So shouldn't be an issue. Tomorrow we'll set the pan. Actually, we have to build this in the shower. It's too big to build in here and take in and set it. So we'll uh, get the pan set and then we'll put all the walls on and then we'll, last thing we'll do is wrap that top and we'll get it in place. So that is the game plan for tomorrow. Tonight I wanna do a little bit of work on walls. Okay, let's take a quick look at what we got here. So both walls are set. There's a pretty sizable hump there in the floor. So I had to cut the bottoms a little out of square to follow that hump. So we've got wires. They've got to go. I've already got a cavity inside this that I've cut out in the foam and I've marked out kind of where those need to go. So if I can come in here, it's a little bit dark in here. I don't have lights in here yet. Um, we'll. We'll fish wires through and we'll have a switch right here. And then this one here, we've got to, there's an access panel hole here we gotta cut out. So we gotta go do that real quick. And then I was telling you earlier about the rabbits. So the way the walls come together, 
is it's going to come flush to this wall and then we're going to cut a rabbit in I don't know about to there there'll be about three eighths of material and it'll connect to this wall and then we'll make a nice L trim piece that'll just slide over and cap it and conceal it do the same thing on this side cut a little rabbit in here push it in and um, put a nice trim piece over here had some tear out and blow out on this panel but I'm not gonna have to worry about it because that trim piece is gonna make it all nice and clean looking Okay, that was slightly sketchy but it worked out um, it's not the cleanest smoothest cut but we're not making furniture here this is just a wall it's got to go up so that'll that'll cradle the walls perpendicular to these and it'll screw and attach to those walls and be a nice attachment and then from there we'll put the aluminum strips in and that'll hold them on the floor and then there will be some aluminum channel that goes across the top that connects the two walls together and finishes it off and that's how we'll secure it to the ceiling i think that's good for tonight i think uh, i'm going to call it and tomorrow we'll come in and try to get these walls set figure out our channel on the bottom figure out how i want to trim all this out and hopefully get the shower set tomorrow pending any big issues so i'm going to call it a night and we'll tackle this tomorrow but before we get started i want to take a quick trip to my parents house because my dad is going to help share some information about today's sponsor, Simply Safe. I want to share an incident. My dad, he has a Simply Safe system at their house, and they also have a vacation home, and they tend to disappear in the wintertime and in the summer. And when they were up at their vacation home, they had an issue. And I want my dad to explain to you what happened and how the Simply Safe system helped him out in this situation. Well, we were out of town, and twice before when we've been out of town, we've had leaks on this pipes coming into my water heater yep. and I've had water in my garage so this time before we left I got these little uh, water sensors to go with my Simply Safe system which we've had for uh, over three years now and I just put them down here where the water heater was turned out that we got an alert and it was in fact leaking water again and it notified you on your you had the app right yeah it notified me on the actually it, notified me on the app and the monitoring center actually called That's Mon right. monitoring mm -hmm. center actually called us so we knew that it was leaking and it saved me from having 50 gallons of water running out of my garage and into my breakfast area. yeah it could have gone in the wall as yeah. well you're going back in the wall easily yeah yeah okay so there you have it not only is simply safe an award-winning security system but it also protects your home from things like water damage smoke and co2 i have two systems i have one in the shop and i have one down in the house the system works off a home base and you get components that hook up to your home base. You get home. door sensors, glass break sensors, you get cameras, HD cameras, both interior and exterior. There's motion sensors as well. Another one of my favorite components is the front doorbell, which has a security camera in it. And there's also a lock. All of this can be controlled from my phone, from Simply Safe's app. It's very simple. I can get notifications anytime the cameras detect motion, anytime the security system gets um, triggered, just like my dad got his notification when he was on vacation for the water. The Simply Safe app is all connected. It is a really cool system. So if you're looking to protect your home from water damage, from smoke, CO2, or from theft, Simply Safe is the right system for you. They are offering a great deal to my viewers. Get 20% off when you sign up for their interactive monitoring plan. You also get your first month for free. Just go to simplysafe.com forward slash Andy Rawls to get that deal. The link is in the description. A huge thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring the channel, for being such amazing supporters. They have been long term supporters of this channel, and I have been a long time user of their product, and it is a good product. I highly recommend it. So, one of the big challenges with this project for me has been understanding and knowing the sequence of work. So, when you build something like a piece of furniture or a home, there's really important steps you take, right? I've never done an RGC or an Airstream restoration, so as I go, um, I kind of get off on the steps and realize I got to take a few steps back, finish this before I can move forward with this. And that's kind of the case with these walls. I, I, I fully anticipated getting up the next day and setting all those walls in place and being done with them. 
But then I realized I have not built the vanity that goes in the bathroom. And if I put those walls in, the vanity will go in, but it's really tricky and challenging. Uh, one thing about these walls is they're not going to be difficult to remove if I ever have to. Um, I take the trim off, pull some screws, and I can pull these walls. But what I realized is I have to, um, have to wait to install the walls and uh, get that shower set in and get the vanity. So there's quite a bit of work I gotta do before I can get the walls in, but at least they're ready to go. So with that in mind, we turn our attention to assembling the shower, which um, was built just a little bit too wide to fit through the walls in the hallway and try to lift it up in place. And it was, it was a bit of a hassle, but I managed to get it done. So as I assemble this, let me explain a little bit more how it comes together. These side walls actually have a very sizable rabbit on them. Um, so that acrylic comes down, it stops, and then it overlaps the shower plan, shower pan. Um, and there's actually a little lip there where the sidewall sets down on the edge of the shower pan. So um, there's not, um, the, the, the good thing about that is not like the, the acrylic just sandwiches up against the shower pan and then you have a seam there, right? There's a little lip that goes over the edge of the shower pan. It's called a rabbit in the woodworking world. And that rests on the shower pan edge and creates a pretty good water, water connection there. It also creates a way for me to attach the sides. So that lip that hangs down, I can put screws, a bunch of screws in there because obviously we only have half inch of material in that shower pan. So we've got to use pretty short screws and I just load them up in there and, and screw a lot in to really give it some strength. Okay, so I've lined the back with a whole bunch of screws. Now, obviously, I can't get any up there right now because of the ceiling. We don't have clearance, but I'm going to try to push it forward and lean it down and work that way. So far, so good. It's a bit tight in here right now. Whoop, sorry, guys. All right. Set that down. All right, let me show you where we're at with this. My dad managed to get the LED light strip and we really actually struggled with this. I bought two different strips. First I had, oh, I don't see it. I don't know where it went. I had one with little lights in it. So this is the actual strip that that makes light, you know, the whole way. And the other one had just little, little bitty lights like every inch or so. So it had a dot pattern to it. This is way better because the light is consistent all the way around. Now the trouble is I ran the groove at a half inch and to make this work we needed to put it in on edge like that instead of flat like this. So we went through a lot of different ideas on how to secure it and actually shim it in there. I tried to glue it, that didn't work. We used several different types of foam. I Finally my dad found kind of like this piping stuff. 
um, and shoved it in there and wedged it in there and it worked great. So this is what it looks like inside. It's pretty cool. I love how, you know, that light is consistent all the way around and it lights up the shower really well. What we want to do today to finish the shower out, it's all secured in place, um, is I need to seal all the corners. So there is some gaps in here. You can see up there. We're going to run some sealer on this and make sure that it is sealed up really well. Same thing on the bottom where it meets the pan. And then once we do that, we're going to install the faucet, which will go right on this wall here. So uh, first thing first here is I need to clean. I need to clean these walls so we don't have any dirt or grime uh, preventing the... Um, adhesion of the sealer there are a few spots too this acrylic man it is i don't it's hard to see that but i cracked it i did that in a couple spots and if you don't you got to be real careful with the acrylic it will crack super easily if you run a screw through it and don't drill a pilot hole it'll just crack it and that's what happened so lesson learned i'm gonna start cleaning this and we're gonna seal it up So while I'm sealing this shower, it's getting really hard to film in the camera. It's getting pretty tight. I do want to tell you guys about Total Boat. Um, so here's kind of a rundown of the products I used. On the shower pan, they provided all of the fiberglass, the epoxy, um, and the, the fairing compounds that I used to put fillets around the corners. They also provided the paint. It's Total Protect epoxy paint. It's incredibly durable and strong, solid paint. It's the same paint I used on the frame of this trailer. So. It is pretty strong stuff. They also provided this amazing product that I didn't even know they had until they sent it to me called Total Boat Seal, which actually works really well. It's, it sticks to just about anything. It adhered to that acrylic, no problem. And um, the only challenge I'll tell you with this stuff, if you use it, is it does dry fast. So you need to work quick. You need to get your bead down and move on because it'll the, the top layer will kind of film off and you're kind of committed at that point. But I'm gonna link all of the products I use for this shower build down there. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to Total Boat and they will help you, especially with the fiberglass stuff. Okay, we're all sealed up. Next step is to drill for the faucet. It looks good, it stinks right now, but it, it'll take a while to cure, but I think this is gonna work great. The another good thing about the Total Boat stuff is it has some elasticity, Elastic. it's flexible. This is what I'm trying to say. So, um, you know, that's good because this thing is rocking and rolling down the road. You want something that has some movement to it. Now, let's drill a hole in this and put in a faucet. Okay, so let's rewind real quick. If you've noticed in the previous shots, the bathroom vanity is already in place. So I wanna go back real quick and show you guys how I built that. Basically, it's a face frame cabinet. So you build a plywood box. And for this one, I actually designed the entire thing in Fusion 360 and then popped it onto my CNC and knocked all the parts out on the CNC, which is cool, a great learning process for me because I'm still learning that program and the CNC. Uh, but basically, I build a plywood box out of half inch plywood. You can see a lot of areas where there's holes cut out in it. That's all to the limit weight. So once you build the plywood box, um, you come back and you make a face frame. I made it out of poplar, this is gonna get painted. Um, so I just domino that together with a, a tool I have that can create little floating tenons glue that up and then clamp it and nail it down on my plywood box and then kind of trim and sand everything to look nice and clean. I went ahead and primed it in the shop before I brought it into the cabin, into the camper. And then getting it set in the camper was challenging. We took multiple tries because we've got a wheel well, we've got plumbing coming in um, and we've got a drain going out. So uh, there's just a lot of parts coming into this cabinet and it's tricky. So I had to set it in, find new places to cut. We did a lot of cutting on it and finally get it in and set and how we want it. We were also having a hard time getting it level. It was wanting to lean, it was wanting to lean back. Is that right? Yeah, I was wanting to lean back because it was, you know, obviously you've got curved walls as well on this on this Airstream. So it was hitting the bottom before it was hitting the top. And you know, it, it just, we had to do a lot of trimming, but we eventually got it, we got it in and it looked great. And um, like I said, we'll go, I'll go ahead. I've got the face frame primed and then the all of the box shot with a clear coat. So. All that's done, basically oh, we'll just brush the paint color on when we get there and we're ready for that. All right, so we've managed to get the vanity in. It took multiple attempts here. Um, we had to do quite a bit of cutting. So first we cut, I decided to cut, I don't know if you can see that in there. It's probably really hard to see, it's a little dark. Yeah, we cut the bottom out right there. So that's gonna allow, we can pull the toilet pretty easily and we can get back in there and get to the elbows down back behind the cabinet. So if we ever need to repair it, we can do that. We also have shutoff valves back there to the whole bathroom. So if something does go wrong, we can turn all the water off to this whole bathroom. 
We also had to cut here because the drain pipe was giving us issues. We couldn't get the cabinet leveled, so this allowed it to have a little bit more movement. So the next step is we gotta, we're gonna plumb it out. The shower faucet's going here. We've got a wire line that goes to a sink. And then I've got a little bit of work, the countertop here, which looks really nice. Pretty excited about how that's looking. Um, we got a little work, because I want it to fit pretty tight against the back. So I need a little work to get that dialed in and fit, and I need to cut a little bit off the back of it as well. But this is a big step. This is in, and it looks great. So I, unfortunately, I didn't get it painted, but it is primed, and we'll have to come back and brush it all on from there. tighten it yeah and then tighten it down with probably another quarter turn or so this should be pretty yeah, tight there it's, it's supposed to rotate ouch Put water up to it I feel, I feel like probably to make sure we're in good shape I didn't close the gap completely with this no, but it's better. Yeah, it's tolerable. Seems pretty solid too. Mm -hmm. Now, do we need to put tape on that? But we can take that off, right? Um, yeah, we could take that off. <clears throat> I don't think we need tape on it. Does it has a gasket in there? It's got a gasket on it. Yeah. So we just cranked on the water pump and pressurized this just to see, make sure we don't have any leaks. And it all looks good. I don't see any water. Coming out of these, and that thing's hard to get threaded straight. Yeah, no, I don't know whether I got it straight, straight or not. Looking at the camera, it looks off to me. Does it? Yeah. That doesn't that, feel right. That doesn't feel right. Feels better. Yeah, it looks it looks like, like it's leaning, leaning right. Yeah. It does. There it goes. You do that so easily. Now, do you need to get a wrench on that? Uh, we might, but uh, I don't think we need to do it much. I think we leave it like that until we test it. How does that look on the camera? That's good. I don't feel any water. I don't see any water. I don't feel anything. I think we got it. Okay, so we're going to shift gears now to a really cool product. I want to give a shout out to E-Trailer who has helped me through this entire restoration. I'm going to link everything in the description that I've put in this trailer that E-Trailer has provi provided. Um, and what we're about to install now real quick is a tire pressure monitoring system, which I'm excited about. I, I want to make this thing as safe as possible to tow. So being able to monitor the tire pressure, if I have low uh, pressure in my tires and I can fix that, that's going to be super cool. So I picked up this uh, TPM system from E-Trailer. Pretty simple. It's got caps that screw on your valves. You just assemble those. I will tell you, if you get this, make sure that you link the caps to the um, display. You know, they, all four of them have to link to it and then screw them on because they need to be close to the display to make that link. I made the mistake of going out, installing them all, and then having to take them off one by one and link them to the display. My dad hooked up some wiring in the front that was a, um, I forget what they call it. It's like a receiver that sends the signal up to the um, display in the front of the truck. 
Um, so that needed to be wired into the 12 volt system. And then from there, it's just a matter of linking each one of those tire pressure monitor sensors to the display, naming it, and then putting it on your wheel. That way, when you look at the display in your truck, you get them all paired up to the proper wheel. Okay, so I got the camper all hooked up. I wanted to get it out real quick and show you one more thing from each other. Hold on, bud. Okay, well, I'm gonna move a little bit more. You can go in there, but we're not gonna do it quite yet. Okay, um, ready? first, uh, yes. Um, did you tell me I'm gonna go to the hammock with mommy and Junie. Okay. I'm um, 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 tell him to come, come over there and tell me. Okay, I'll come get you, okay? okay? Okay, where are we at? Um, I wanted to show you the tire pressure stuff in the truck real quick because I wanted to try that out. Got it hooked up. It is sitting right here. So, it's, I mean, it, everything reads like it should it picks up the signal and it's just cycling through the tires it blinks on the tire that I that it's showing so right now it's this back one 62 PCI 70 degrees and it pops up to the other back one 63 70 so it just keeps cycling through and I can automatic I can go through it on my own by hitting these plus and minuses here really cool it's got a little suction cup here that holds it on so um, yeah man that's a cool little addition I got screens everywhere I've got the camera screen here I also got this from a trailer this thing is cool um, it gives me a back and a left and a right view so I can see blind spots and I can see behind the camper okay guys that closes it down I just want to say a huge thanks to y'all for tuning in for watching for supporting this build it is getting much closer I think real soon I'm gonna do a comprehensive video of the cost of everything I've learned in this build uh, I think that would be great information for y'all I'm also knocking around the idea of doing a live stream from inside here um, so you guys can ask me questions. If you have any questions on what I've been doing, I think that'd be a lot of fun. So all the products from this video, everything is linked in the description. If you want to check it out, go down there and check it out. And as always, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time.